the West and good and evil. Western civilization, like all other civilizations today and in the past, has a founding principle. For Hindu civilization there are the teachings of the Brahmins, for Eastern Sinitic civilizations there are Buddha and Confucius, for Islamic civilization there is Mohammed. Similarly, for Western civilization, there is Christ. Out of all the civilizations, it was only the monotheistic civilizations that claimed to have a universal nature. These are the Western and Islamic civilizations. In this context, there is a diametric difference between Christianity and Islam. This difference can be best and briefly stated in a, a contemporary theocracy that Islam preaches and b, a future theocracy that Christianity preaches. Islam believes Muhammad has already brought the complete message, while Christianity believes that the living Christ is continuously the complete word and effectuates righteousness with God for eternity. With this background, we can ask some serious questions about Western civilization. The most prominent question for me in this piece is, what is the story with Western humanism? The thesis I am going to present in response to this question is that Western humanism was always an underlying part of Western moral reality, but it placed a new destructive focus on mankind during the Age of Enlightenment. The focus of humanism has always been regarded by Western civilization as an evil human-oriented bias that undermines the ability for moral uplifting and therefore had to be completely subject to control. To explain this thesis, I am going to use an analogy. The comparison will speak about the founding principle of Western civilization as a human and communal ability to distinguish between good and evil and more precisely the methods available for that discriminatory ability. In addition to the ability to distinguish good from evil, this comparison must go further. We must see our civilization in terms of our ability to coexist with good and evil, emphasizing living with other people in a civilized community, while good and evil are always present. The comparison I will use is based on knowledge that Enlightenment era thinkers didn't have much clarity about when they laid the foundation for new humanistic Western thinking. The knowledge that will be used as a comparison is our modern knowledge about the existence, survival and continuous recovery of microbial living systems such as bacteria, viruses, fungi and immune systems, along with macrobiological systems like whales and human bodies. Without going into the deep knowledge about these types of organisms and systems, we can particularly focus on the simple reality we see in the biosphere, that at all times. Microbial pathogens coexist with other microbial systems in the bodies of most macrobiological systems. Despite this reality, we must also acknowledge that, amid these pathogens, we know that most organisms exist very close to optimal function. Life on Earth is breathtakingly resilient to pathogens and lives in a statistically speaking overwhelming majority, as flourishing organisms, ready to make the most and the best of their biosphere. The point here is not that humans and other organisms live without pathogens, but that we, amid pathogens and parasites within our own bodies, still experience good lives, in general. For this comparison to work well, we must just look at the biological reality, and for a moment leave the human emotional state and mindset out of the comparison. It will be clear why this is a good strategy, specifically for this analogy. Therefore, we just look at the incredible reality of being a biological human, along with all the other organisms in our biosphere. In it, there is a lesson I hope we can learn from our biological existence, so we can apply it to our civilizational reality as Westerners. Who knows, there may even be a lesson for other civilizations to learn from, but that is definitely not my goal, while anyone is welcome to expand it universally. So, if we can now compare the natural state of the Western human with our biological state, to learn something from it. Something to learn about our moral existence where good and evil are also a big question. What is that natural state? The natural state of all life on earth is that pathogens exist between and together with all living systems. It is the absolute exception that there is not a pathogen for a macrobiological system. And we can go further and acknowledge that for almost all macrobiological systems there is some biological pathogen. It is definitely not chemical substances that can kill us, there are microorganisms always present with us, inside our bodies, that can kill us, at any moment. But we don't die easily. In addition to the pathogens, there are also other biological systems and organisms that actively and continuously protect us against these pathogens. 
this is why we don't die easily, and why there is still such a wealth of macrobiological diversity of species that, amid pathogens, survive. Our natural state is a state where death mechanisms are part of our physical being on a continuous basis, but amidst it, we do not die easily. Alongside our natural state, all people can also acknowledge that they have a personal experience of the presence of pathogens. We all know what it means to be sick, even if it's just a cold that we experience every now and then in our lives. There are also many of us who experience more serious consequences of pathogens and even experience how death affects our loved ones. But if we do not look at this comparison in terms of the emotional impact that death has on us, we can see that most people, and especially other organisms we know about, thrive incredibly. We can observe that, in the midst of all the pathogens, our entire biosphere is teeming with thousands of species and millions of living organisms of all shapes, colors, and wonderful beauty. It is therefore so overwhelming in our consciousness that we do not constantly think about the pathogens in our bodies or other organisms' bodies, but that we think of all the wonderful experiences we have. It is for all life as if there is a norm of enjoyment of life. When we look at birds, we do not think about the pathogens in their intestines. We think about the beauty of their flight, their ability to find food, build a nest and their elegant existence that they make known to us. Thus, we are not overwhelmed by the death machines in organisms, but rather by the life that radiates from all organisms. This is also particularly what we see in people and want to see. Life and abundance. We see life and not death. It is natural for us to focus on life and not the pathogens. But now we have to be careful and ask ourselves if there are always pathogens associated with all forms of life. Why is life for us the norm of existence and not the process of dying? What causes us not to have to think about pathogens? What makes us expect to become healthy when some pathogen makes our bodies sick? We all know that there are incredibly complex and successful immune systems that work constantly to keep us healthy. These are systems that never stop looking for pathogens. Always seeking and attacking pathogens and ensuring that the pathogens always remain in remission. Systems that cannot recognize and destroy pathogens are called an immune deficiency syndrome. This is an extremely dangerous type of virus that can achieve such a disease condition, and until very recently, humans were not familiar with such a type of pathogen. However, this is very valuable for this comparison, because in Western civilization there has also arisen a moral virus that makes the entire civilization suffer from a moral immune deficiency syndrome. This is where my comparison comes in. An analogous comparison to describe the founding principles of Western civilization in terms of our current moral dilemma. If we see moral wickedness as the pathogens in a community or individual's moral being, and the total biological organism as the community or the individual's total being, then we can see the founding principle of Western civilization as the belief that Christ has finally overcome the moral wickedness pathogens, which is always present in a community organism, to the extent that that community has truth, goodness and beauty and life and abundance as a norm of moral existence, with the expectation that the community can and will stand in victory over the moral wickedness of pathogens forever. The victory is over the mechanism of death and not the removal of that mechanism from our reality. Moral pathogens are and can be put into remission. The founding principle of Western civilization has always been contrasted with a desperate belief that moral wickedness will always prevail, and communities will be more sick than healthy. It was a desperate belief that existed among the original barbarian tribes, and was successfully overcome by understanding and living out the message of Christ. For the West, the recognition of the divine and perfect victory over the moral wickedness of their own existence was cardinal. There was a complete and intense subconsciousness that was mobilized by the teachings of Christ to expel all pathogens, wickedness from the community, not with the expectation that the human or community will ever be without sin, but with the knowledge that the total community organism can and should exist healthily and healingly. It was never, or at least not until the emergence of influential thinkers such as Niccolò Machiavelli and his skeptical ideas about the true nature of human moral behavior that Western civilization was convinced that wickedness is an insurmountable reality. A malevolent reality that could merely be harnessed to manipulate the community. One could go further and acknowledge that something like the selling of indulgences, 
by the Roman Catholic Church had the same effect on the immune system of Western civilization against the pathogens of evil. It was precisely at that time when victory over sin was either totally denied or the Church took the victory over sin out of God's hands, that Western civilization experienced an incredible spiritual and intellectual revival in the Reformation and the Enlightenment. But during the founding of Western civilization, the effect of the founding principle was that all communities within civilization were freed from the crippling beliefs that appeared like an immune deficiency syndrome. So that the body could naturally act against and rid itself of the pathogens evil. The barbarian tribes saw the Christian missionaries from the decayed Roman civilization as carriers of a complete moral immune system, fully competent to bring healing by identifying and destroying the pathogens evil, to the extent that it became so dormant that it could no longer make the body a community sick they could go into total remission. It was a continuous moral healing that, like an immune system, never stopped, always ready to expel evil. The moral victory of Christ was in reality like a complete immune system, which, in the midst of the presence of pathogens, has the ability to recognize and expel the pathogens, to the extent that the body a community, individual can live a healthy life. A morally healthy life was then exposed as a life full of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. A life and community where the virtues that God has made known from all times, so that Western civilization could recognize it from Greek wisdom as, 1, prudence, 2, temperance, 3, justice, 4, fortitude, 5, faith, 6, hope, 7, love. Through Christ and God triune with us in the Holy Spirit, our lives were so abundant and fulfilled that evil could continuously be placed in total remission. It should now be clear to any member or student of Western civilization that something dramatically began to change. That there has been a dramatic rejection of the divine immune system, and that the Enlightenment era established a different type of humanistic system of our community's existence. The new system can be fully and aptly described by the thesis that flowed from Jean-Jacques Rousseau's influential humanistic conviction, that the natural man is supposedly not originally evil, but individually perfect. According to Rousseau, evil pathogens have now shifted to external systems, social institutions a type of ecosystem that the perfect individual experiences in his external environment. Evil was no longer something essentially and personally part of his own moral being. Whether it was his intention to throw the entire Western civilization back into a moral, immune deficiency syndrome, I cannot say with certainty, but I can confidently acknowledge that his philosophy's rejection of the human need for a perfect divine, moral immune system, that only God himself can maintain, has led to moral decay, immune deficiency. It is as if he undermined our divine DNA to no longer have the ability to recognize moral evil, pathogens for what it truly is. The total Western humanist existence has been metastasizing since Rousseau's philosophy to such an extent that we as Westerners, and other civilizations, as observers and imitators, now witness an absolute confusion about what moral evil, pathogens truly are. Rousseau's philosophy, and the rejection of Christ led to a materialism that openly admits there should not actually be an awareness of the pathogens in our, civilization organism. Our symptoms of moral uncertainty are merely a fever caused by external circumstances. Material progress and our ability to manipulate the external environment extensively, even biological systems we can manipulate, were and are still seen as a type of absolute proof that we are not evil. Any attempt to address the pathogens of evil within our own natural being is actively undermined by our civilization systems, and seen as a pointless, perhaps even dangerous immune response because it will damage our self-image if we believe we have moral pathogens in our deepest being. It's as if we deny our inner sinful evil reality, and refuse to put the pathogens into remission by the victory of Christ's complete immune system. We would rather blame external environmental factors, institutions, relationships, focus on mechanical progress, instead of marveling at a virtuous healthy life that we do have within us. But now we must ask ourselves why we as a Western community are so materially successful. We live so much longer than our Western ancestors, poverty is decreasing so quickly, prosperity is growing so quickly and spreading successfully to more and more people. How can we pretend that we are or could become sick as a community when we feel so healthy? 
our symptom suppression is so complete, we don't need an immune system. This is a belief that I myself also regularly maintained because I believed in the Rousseauian promises of the sinlessness of man, and the psychosis that pathogens are just an illusion, as I accepted it in my being as an illusion, despite my moral headaches and fever. Like so many modern Christians, I convinced myself that, once a Christian, always a Christian, means God has banished all pathogens from my being and placed me in a quasi rousseauian perfect state. I completely surrendered myself to an immune deficiency syndrome, because Rousseau subconsciously convinced me that pathogens within me are just an illusion. What was more important to me was that I also believed Rousseau that we do not need an immune system, but just an ecosystem of material care, I completely denied the internal ecosystem of pathogens and organisms, within myself and accepted an external mechanistic materialistic approach to the existence of my being. I was convinced that if we ignore evil and only enjoy the mechanosphere as external communities organisms, then we do not need to think about the evil pathogens in our own body of death. I personally am a scientifically oriented person, and I know that we have scientific capabilities to truly overcome all environmental and social challenges. For me, it was initially easy to blame external political oppression and resource power balance for the suffering, conflict and wars that ended the Enlightenment era after the Second World War. Looking at the history post-war, I still did not see how our moral immune deficiency syndrome caused everything civilized to come into conflict with each other. I was blind to the pathogens that make us sick, because we could suppress the symptoms. I did not see how many different moral diseases had overwhelmed our Western foundational principles. I did not see how we are exposed to a total moral inability to act against the moral pathogens. I did not see how the principles that bring goodness and health to a community are subject to inversion. Good has become bad, and bad has become good. From this comparison, it should perhaps now become clear why the message of Christ is the founding principle of Western civilization. This is because only Christ can affirm the reality of moral evil pathogens within us, and only Christ can ensure that we actively build and maintain our moral healing immune systems and institutions ready to act against the pathogens in our own bodies and completely heal them so that we can live truly healthy. The reality of moral pathogens in every person must be recognized and acknowledged at all costs for what it is. Just as Niccolò Machiavelli saw it in The Prince, I must see it too, but with the exclusive aim of alerting the divine immune system, and participating in my deepest moral dedication in the process of forcing evil into remission. Therefore, I will never stop watching out for moral evil in my own being, just as I never expect my immune system to stop looking out for pathogens in my own body. I will also never expect any moral immune system other than a divine perfect system to have the ability to protect me against moral pathogens. To dilute the nature of evil to anything that can be subjected by a person himself has been the beginning of the end of all civilizations throughout the ages. It is precisely the West's immoral behavior that stands out clearly to the other modern civilizations on earth, such as the Orthodox Russian civilization, the Islamic civilization, the Indian civilization, and the Chinese civilization. They all think the West has lost its moral way, no matter how hypocritical and arrogant their belief is, it is based on factual experience. Only a divine absolute authority over evil pathogens can create and sustain a civilization. It is a humble privilege for me to be part of the Western founding principle. I will always seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, because in the process I will always be healed from the pathogens, evil that is always present, perhaps even until Christ's second coming.